join in singing some carols. Uh, you might notice that uh, Angels We Have Heard on High was written in twice. That was an accident. Uh, so we will not be doing it again after the scripture reading. We'll only do it as the opening. Oh, sorry, it's not the opening, the second song. All right, so page 133, Heart to Herald Angels Sing. <laughs> Oh, 
25. That your baby boy would one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you deliver will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to the blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? Then when you kiss your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. Mary, did you know? Did you know 
with your baby boy is Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy was heaven's perfect lamb? <coughs> Sleeping child you're holding is the great join me in a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for this Christmas Eve, this Christmas 2022 that you have blessed each and every one of us to see. Father, many have not made it this far. Many wish to have seen this day, but did not. But your grace, your mercy, your peace has guided us and kept us. Even throughout the challenges that we've had throughout this year, Father, you have sustained us. You have kept us in the hollow of your hand. You've hid us under the shadow of your wing. You have protected us. You are leading and guiding us. We are so grateful to you, God, for without you, we can do nothing. Tonight, Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus, even now, Lord, that your spirit of truth, your spirit of peace, your spirit of love, would light this place with your glory. Each and every heart, each and every mind, that it be open to the word of the word of the Lord tonight. May the gospel be heard. May the gospel be accepted, believed, and lived by each and every one of us here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, good evening, Canterbury Chapel. Good evening. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Is it still okay to say that? <laughs> the subject of our homily, I call it a homily, that means I intend to be brief. Amen? Amen. <laughs> oh, I got some amen. See that? <laughs> the subject of our homily this evening is joy at his coming. It is indeed my privilege to be before you tonight on this Christmas Eve, and I welcome those of you joining us via social media. We are located at 381 South Main Street in Attleboro, where faith in Jesus Christ is our foundation. It is good to gather here this evening for our annual Christmas Eve service as we conclude our Advent season. We were blessed over the past several weeks throughout Advent by our ministers who <coughs> each brought us a message corresponding to each of the candles of Advent, beginning with hope, faith, joy, and then peace. And now we've arrived at the culmination of what each candle was pointing us toward, and that is the second coming or the second Advent of Christ which is today represented by the fifth and final most important candle, and that is the Christ candle. The Christ candle is a white candle in color, which represents purity, holiness, righteousness, which are inherent characteristics in God's personage. Understand, beloved, that the actual purpose of the candles is to light the way toward our hope in Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one of God. For by the grace of God, he has appeared that offers salvation to all peoples. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness, to worldly passions, and to live self-controlled and upright, godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2, 11 through 13 tells us. For truly Jesus is our blessed hope, is he not? Yes. Just as he was at the first advent, 
and he remains our blessed hope even today in 2022, almost 23 now. He is still our only hope. He is still our soon coming king. He is still our redeemer and savior. And we eagerly wait, we eagerly hope in him as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ for when he will return to gather us unto himself. That is what we hope for, which is why faith and joy, the candles that we lit the first and second week, also remind us that we should fix our eyes on Jesus, who is the author, the pioneer, the establisher of our faith, or the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and even now, while we are yet here, he is seated at the right hand of God, the right hand of the majesty of God, on the throne of God itself. And consider this, beloved, him, Jesus, the Savior, who endured opposition against all sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart, Hebrews 12, 2 through 3 tells us. For when we consider that God came in the flesh, he came as Emmanuel, God with us, as a little baby boy in the manger, as we like to tell the story. But he grew up, and one day he was sacrificed for you and for me. This is why he came at the first advent, but not why he will come at the second. You see, he appeared once and, and once and for all at the culmination of the ages to do away with sins by the sacrifice of himself. Just as people are destined once to die and after to face judgment, so Christ sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Right, many people that are waiting for him tonight in this place. Amen. Amen. Yes, beloved, it is in this hope, this faith, this joy, and yes, even in this peace that we are trusting. For God was pleased, it says, to have all the fullness of his godliness dwell in Christ. And through him, he reconciled to himself all things in heaven and on the earth, making peace through the blood of that he shed on the cross. Amen? Amen. Amen? Once, by the way, you were alienated from God. That means you were strangers. You were, you were enemies of God in your minds because of your evil behavior. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Jesus made it possible for us to stand before a holy, pure God, which is what this white candle represents. Pure, holy, blameless, and spotless without accusation. So no matter who you were in your life, no matter what sins you've committed, no matter how old you are, if you are having faith in Christ, trusting in Christ, you stand before God, pure, holy, spotless, and blameless. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you continue in your faith, however, see, there's a condition. Whenever you see if in the sentence, that means it's a conditional thing. So you receive this spotlessness, this blemishlessness, if you will, if you continue in your faith, established firm, and you do not move from the hope that is held in the gospel. This is the gospel that you have heard and has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, Colossians 1, 19-23 tells us. And this, beloved, is true for us today. It's true for every spiritual believer, both past, present, and future. Just as it was for Elizabeth, and Mary, who believed and through their hope and faith became the source of great joy. Do you, when I read the story, should I say, when Minister Mary read the story, I'm sure you said, this is an interesting scripture, Pastor, to read for Christmas. Aren't you going to talk about baby Jesus in the manger? Aren't you going to talk about the shepherds in the fields as they lay? Aren't you going to talk about the hawk, the heralds of angels and the hosts that were singing in the atmosphere? But you have to understand that I'm talking to you about joy at his coming. Look at what happened when Elizabeth and Mary, John the Baptist, and Jesus in the womb met each other. The spirit was present. There was overwhelming and great joy at his coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
For you see, beloved, both joy and peace are produced by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5 tells us that it's the fruit of the Spirit, if you will. It's the joy and peace that's experienced by all who in hope and faith and joy and peace are earnestly awaiting the advent of our common Lord Jesus Christ. The scripture says that the mere sound of the Savior's mother's voice, when it was heard by John the Baptist in the womb of his mother Elizabeth, he began to leap for joy within his mother's womb. Now I've got to tell you, you know, if, if, if I had something leaping in my belly, I would think it was hot burn from what I had earlier this evening. But you mothers here who have carried children, you know what it feels like when the child does cartwheels and flips and things in your womb and you get that little tickle in a butterfly. Can I get an amen from the brothers in the house? Amen. All right now. But for the brothers out here, you know sometimes when you have too much to eat, and, and, you, and you go over that whoop you do hill sometimes, and you get those little butterflies. Is that all right? Yeah. When, they, when, when, when John the Baptist in Elizabeth's womb heard the voice of Mary, he began to do somersaults in the womb of Elizabeth. That's what the text is telling us here. He began to leap for joy within his mother's womb at the coming of our Lord. Would that we had that kind of joy today as believers. Would that we were excited to come to fellowship together, to gather together and worship. I love listening to you sing tonight. You got to sound better tonight than you do on Sunday morning. Something's up with that. I don't know. But I'm telling you that something happens when the Spirit of God in me and the Spirit of God in you, when they meet each other, that something happens to the atmosphere. Have you ever sensed that? Yeah. Have you ever experienced that? Yeah. That is what we're seeing here in our text. Let's look at our text again in Luke 1. I said I was going to be short, didn't I? At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to the town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Say what now? I thought the Holy Spirit was only after, later after Jesus went back to heaven in Acts. But here we see that the whole that, that, that Elizabeth, John the Baptist's mother, was what? Filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, Pastor Warren, read it into the text, or is that what it says? In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women. Now, all your who are Catholic, y'all know this part real well, don't you? And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. They used to say in the Catholic, right? And blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that my mother's Lord should come to me? Why are any of us so favored that Jesus would die for you and me? Why are any of us so favored that Jesus would smile upon you and me? Why are any of us deserving of our Lord coming and giving his life for you and me? But that's exactly why he came. As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, she said, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed the word of the Lord will fulfill his promises to her. Elizabeth is overwhelmed by the joy she feels, for she was once barren, but now she's six months old. Go back and read the text. I didn't read the whole thing in Luke. And now she's with child. But if that wasn't enough, she's meeting the vessel who is carrying the Savior of the world. And the Spirit of God filled her and the child in the womb, and the joy was present at his coming. Amen? Amen. For they knew what? They knew that the hope of all mankind was now in their midst. That's a great reason to have joy. Amen? Yes, all that they. All that the ancestors prayed for, all that humankind to come would ever need or hope for, all that they were believing for in faith was now producing in them great joy. And soon it would produce peace that would forever change the course of human history because the Prince of Peace was now in their presence. So when she heard the voice of his mother, joy overcame her. And she called her, and actually she is calling all of you today blessed and highly favored. 
This was the true and real Christmas gift, by the way. This was the true and real Christmas gift to mankind. Not the present under the tree, corresponding to the winter solstice, not Santa Claus, Rudolph, Frosty the Snowman, but the man, Christ Jesus, who would be born of a virgin, who would be swaddled in swaddling clothes, put in a manger in Bethlehem, the house of bread, in the city of David, in Judea, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Mary and Elizabeth had great joy in his coming, but beloved, his next coming will be even more joyous for all of us who are remaining here in hope. Did you hear what I said? His next coming will be even greater and fulfilled with greater joy for those who remain in great hope. Amen. Remaining in faith, who joy in the struggles and challenges of life, who walk in his peace and show the world his love. We, along with all saints, will experience the ultimate joy at his coming. And just like when they heard the sound of the mother of Jesus back then, when we hear the sound of the trumpet, when we hear the sound of the archangel, the joy and the spirit that is in us will respond to the spirit of God in the air and we will be caught up to meet him in the clouds. And we will forever be with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. For we receive on that day our final Christmas gift, and that is eternal life with God. For I tell you truly, when the Son of Man comes in all his glory, will he find faith in the earth? Amen. 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 that I hold in my hand. Father, we could never repay you for what you have given us in Christ. Truly, Father, our joy is full because we are filled with your Holy Spirit. It is one of the many gifts you have given us. It is the fruit that is to be seen in the life of the believer. Father, I pray in Jesus' name tonight that heretofore we would exemplify the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness. May they be found in this fellowship, Lord. 
Let your light shine so bright that not only out of borough, but many places beyond will see your glory and want to know your son. Breathe on the gifts that I hold in my hand. May they be used for the furtherance of the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand with me as we close out our service tonight. Savior Jesus Christ be with you now, tonight, and throughout this weekend. I bless you in his name. Go in his peace. Let his love, let his hope, let his joy, let his peace be richly multiplied within you and to your families. I bid you all Merry Christmas and God bless you and good night. Amen. 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 God bless you. <coughs> Have a great Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Thank you.